Welcome back and happy holidays. We're going to do another Santa today. Uh, this is, uh, who's it? What's the guy's name? Tim? Something. Isn't he like the original? The Santa Claus. What's his name? Tim? Uh, Tim what? What? Tim Allen. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Autumn. Okay, so uh, we're going to try to make it look like Santa Claus and the celebrity actor Tim Allen. So we're going to start by just drawing an egg for the head with on a slight angle to the right. Focus lock. And we're going to put the eyes across the middle. And let's zoom in. And remember, we're, on the face from the front, we're always going to take a few measurements or at least think about them. So we're looking for the, the width across an eye, like that, and comparing it to the width between the eyes and also comparing it to the width from the eye to the cheekbone. Okay, so um, the interesting thing here is that his head is not 100% centered. You see how the nose is a little bit to the right, and that means that this cheekbone here is a little smaller than this cheekbone here. So this is the beginning of what we call three-quarter view, uh, where the head is just slightly turned. So let's try to account for that. We're going to put our the big eye space a little, just a little to the right. It's not exactly in the middle. And a lot of artists like to represent that by just putting a little curved axial line down the middle of the egg that's bending slightly the direction the head is turned. And then we're going to make a smaller eye space to the right of it, because he's got a pretty wide eye spacing, and then a smaller eye space to the left. And if you get your spacing correct, you'll have quite a bit more space left over on this side here than you have on this side here. I tried to take your pictures so that you wouldn't have to deal with that effect um, in your photographs, but you never know. There might be a slight turn to some of your heads. Um, now, part of what makes him look like Santa Claus is uh, he's jolly. And we're going to capture that by, we're going to go straight across the bottoms of the eyes. Can you see that? And that straightness is caused by uh, the cheek. Um, when you smile, your cheeks push the bottom of your eyelids up, and they become flatter than th they would have been. So um, we're going to exaggerate that just a little by making these go dead straight. And then we're going to put these little curves above them for the openings of the eyes. Um, for those of you who tend to make eyes too big, you really can't do that on Santa Claus because um, he's so jolly that the eyes uh, compress down to almost nothing. Um, notice he does have visible eyelids, and they're a fairly consistent width. So we're going to come around like that with the eyelid form and like that. And when it comes down to drawing the, the irises, this is an example of, it's going to help a lot to just pay attention to the shapes of the white on either side. So there's a little triangle on the left, and there's a little triangle on the right. 
So that's called looking for the negative shapes around the iris rather than trying to draw the iris itself. And we haven't really done this before in this class, but we're going to draw a highlight on the iris before we draw the pupil. And that highlight is the little shape of white. And you'll notice the pupil is behind it, like this. And we're going to do those highlights because um, Santa is known for having a twinkle in his eye. And you can't do that without the highlight. And we're not going to go too hard on the bags under his eyes because we don't want to make him look too tired. But we are going to indicate these plane changes because he is an older gentleman. And we don't want to make him look like a teenager. Now, I don't know if this is Tim Allen's actual nose. You keep drawing while I'm explaining this. Um, but uh, even though his eye spacing is fairly wide, you'll notice that the nose is a lot wider than the eye spacing. So what I'm doing is I'm creating some construction lines. Um, the whole nose is shifted slightly to the right, again, because of the turn of the head. But we're going to go from the white of the eye down on this side and from the almost to the pupil on this side. And you're going to have a hard time drawing the nose that wide because you're all in the habit of making noses way too small. But I really want you to just trust the construction lines here and not uh, not let yourself get distracted by anything, by what, the way you think it should look. And we're going to look for a geometric shape here to help us with the length of the nose. What does that shape look like? A square, yeah. So this is easy, right? We're going to just... Um, and the reason it's a square instead of a rectangle is because, again, his nose is unusually wide. And it also has a sort of ball-like tip. Let's see if I can drop a. So that's a little big, maybe. Let's try it. No, that's too small. Uh, the problem is I can't move these circles once I draw them, so. OK, so let's just notice how this circle is slightly to the, it's not centered on the bottom of the box. It's slightly to the right. And that's going to help us also with the turn. And then we're going to draw the tip of the nose like we always do. And the very flattened out forms of the nostrils, again, the way we normally do. And then we're going to put these in parentheses like this and we've just now we've got a three-quarter view nose um, we never want to do a hard outline of the edge of the nose unless it's a profile so we're going to do a shaded a shaded line like that and a little shading at the inside corners of the eyes Um, these are definitely prosthetic eyebrows because I don't think Tim Allen had eyebrows like this. But we're going to outline the general shape of them first, which is the same way we block in hair. And then inside that shape, we're going to indicate the direction that the hair is growing like that. And don't shade them too dark or you'll make them... You know, he's supposed to have gray hair. I don't know why those eyebrows are so dark in the photograph. but And we've got a little plane change at the corners 
These are called the labial folds at the outside corner of the ala. Now, I'm going to use geometry to help me find how far down the mouth goes. Um, let's see what happens if we add another square and see where that brings us. And this is just a kind of a variation on fractional thinking, right? By, by making another square, we're saying the distance from the this line, but the eye line to the bottom of the nose is about the same as from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the lower lip. So we can make that other s square, and that's going to give us the bottom lip down here. Notice that the curve of the bottom lip, uh, it goes, it bottoms out again to the right of the center of the square and that's because uh, again the, tr the slight turn to the head so that gives us a curve kind of like that and the upper teeth are also slightly to the right of the center of the square um, in a three-quarter view everything shifts a little so you just have to get used to that And you'll notice, um, as often happens, we are now, um, we're going to be coming way down past the bottom of the egg that I started with, and we're also going to be coming way up above it. The egg is just a placeholder to get us started. Um, depending on the individual's proportions, we often have to either grow it or shrink it as, we, as the drawing proceeds. And it was always hard to see the bottom of his chin because he's got the full white beard, obviously. So we're going to zoom out now and maybe clean up some of this annotation. And we've really done all the hard part. Now we're really just blocking in the hairline. And the hairline sort of, on my drawing, it sort of follows the line of the original egg. Um, yours may vary a little, but. And along the edge where the beard is growing, we're going to put a broken line like this. You don't want to do that with a solid outline. And we're going to use a little more fractional thinking to determine how high the hair comes up. So if I go from the brow ridge to the hairline, that's just a little smaller than the hairline to the top of the hair. You see that? So if we go brow ridge to hairline, and we go almost that much again, that's going to bring us way up here for the top of the hair. Um, he's obviously using some product in that hair to get it to stand up like that. And then we're just blocking in the outside of the hair. Which transitions around earlobe level we don't have to draw the ears today. Transitions into the majestic Santa beard. Let me zoom out so we can see that. So I'm going to be taking a short break to check your work, and then we'll, we have time to do a little bit of shading on these. I'm just 
It's moving his hairline up a tiny bit. Okay. So, uh, we're gonna we're gonna spend a little time on shading. If you're still working on your outlines, uh, go ahead. Um, I, everybody, please, Muhammad. Um, so we're gonna try to shadow map this now. If if you're still struggling with the outlines, um, you can just work on outlines, but there's something I really should have called more attention to. First of all, I was trying to indicate that the line between the front teeth is slightly to the right, and I made that line too dark. And if you make that line too dark, it'll look like, uh, like he has a gap tooth. So we're gonna make that line very subtle, and, um, and we're not gonna, if you, if you ever indicate lines between teeth, you have to make them just like little dots almost. And then notice how the, the dental arch, we're looking down on the dental arch a little, so it's, it's curving up. Some of you made the dental arch straight, and that made them look, Santa look very sad and scary. So um, make sure that that's curving up a little. The challenge is to draw a happy smile without actually showing um, the, uh, the corners of the mouth, which are all covered with the mustache. So we are gonna shadow map this and do a quick shading. We only have a few minutes left. Um, this assignment doesn't exist yet, so I'm gonna ask you to uh, put the drawings in your slots or take pictures of them. If you want to bring your drawing home to show your mommies and daddies, you can take a picture of it. Yes. Yep. Um, I'm still recording here. Katarina, so. um, yeah, if you want to finish Santa at home from the video, it will be posted by, just give me about 15 minutes to get it up. Um, notice Santa has a slightly red nose, so we can do a little more shading on the tip of the nose. A little shading under the eyes. I'm basically only doing first shading on this. And we can even shade the hair a little bit on the shadow side of the head. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, happy holidays, everyone. Uh, that's, that's it for today.